Welcome to India's longest running show on entrepreneurship. I'm Shireen Bhan. Now today we bring you a special episode with all the highlights from Thai Delhi NCR's India Internet Day. In its fourth edition, the conference brought together entrepreneurs, investors, young professionals under one roof to focus on the opportunities that the internet holds for the present and for the future. First up on the show, the man behind one of India's fastest growing technology companies and our very own young tech, Dipinder Goyal of Zomato, talking about living life in the fast lane. With a presence in 22 countries, over 1 million restaurant listings and having acquired 7 companies in just about 6 months, Zomato has seen some seriously rapid growth. With plans to be a global platform for food discovery, Dipinder candidly talks about his startup shopping spree. The story of acquisitions is actually quite funny as well. So we went into New Zealand and um, there was this large player called Menu Mania, um, probably 10 times our size and we, were trying, and we just could not compete with them. So out of desperation I um, called up the founder, uh, I mean he's not with us anymore so I can tell you the real story. So I called up the founder and I uh, told him that guys, I mean we want to buy you. Right? He takes a five second pause and uh, he asked me, so for how much? And I had no idea, right? So I, I say, okay, one million dollars. And then he takes a five second pause and says, okay, deal. <laughs> Quickest acquisition ever. Like, that's, that's amazing, right? So, and, and, and the funny thing is that I meant um, one million US dollars. And we finally had to pay one million New Zealand dollars, which saved us some money. <laughs> so he didn't know that. After that, we figured that there might be a lot of other like small uh, internet companies which are local leaders in all these markets, and we should just go after them. So I, for the next month, I, I went on a one-month shopping trip. Right, I like, met all these founders of various companies, and I and I gave them like three-hour deals. Like I used to give them like, guys, I don't want you to talk to anybody else. Here's the check three hours, take it or leave it, and everybody took it. First thing that you need to do is not listen to your board. So, Investors included. Investors included. I think because everybody will always be cautious that guys, you're stretching yourself too thin, don't do this, don't do this, right? But you cannot really prepare for launching into any other international market. Like all you need to do is like jump and then learn how to swim. Right? Every country is going to be a different ball game, and you can only figure out how to work in that market once you're in that market. The second thing is, I think, selection of markets. Right. So if you are going after a lot of countries, go after countries where there's low competition. Like. For us, we have a rule that never have more than two war zones open at the same time. Right? So we had two tough markets and we had a lot of easy markets. And 50% of our bandwidth used to go into these two tough markets. Right? And the easy ones were easy and easy. And if, but if we had, the, had a third war front open, like nothing would work. The third thing was that I think this is where Silicon Valley fails. Um, Valley does not customize its product according to the target market. Right? So we figured that why Google local fails or like any of these products fail is because they don't like really cater to that local taste of the audience, right? So and, and I mean we are we are in food and food is very local. Food is very very cultural to any particular city. Like Bombay searches on Zomato differently than Delhi, right? So we're like okay, customize the product as much as you want, but make sure that the product works in that local market. Why you should look at international is because. India is a very risky place to be in. I mean, you don't put all your eggs in one basket. I mean, it comes down to the debate that's happening right now as well, right? I mean, the laws could change any time. I, I mean, I totally don't trust the government to really, like, keep any business safe here, right? And, I mean, you don't know when any government official or any telco company would wake up on the wrong side of the bed and screw your business, right? So, de-risk. Right now, India is 8% of our traffic, and whatever's happening doesn't really affect our business. There's something that all of us here need to do and like we need to do something differently if we want to build more global products out of India. We need to change our mindset, right? I mean, 
so whenever I mean nothing to take away from the from these things that I'm going to talk about, but when Twitter acquired Zipdial, right? Great outcome, right? But the media says that India is becoming a hotbed for global companies for ac for acquisitions. Like stop being bitches to global companies, right? I mean like so I mean you should say that hey India like this acquisition happened and a valley company acquired an Indian company. That's pretty much it, right? I mean, do not look up to those companies. Go beat them. Go fight them, right? So that's how India is going to build these global products. Whatever you're doing right now is not going to make the cut. So the message from the Pinder is clear. Stay focused, stay sharp, be clear about your strategy, align your front end with your back end. Don't worry about competitors, whether in the domestic market or globally. Stay true to who you are. Let's move on now. The last couple of years have seen social media explode. It's led to companies trying to analyze how to use social media, digital marketing and so on and so forth. At a time when social media can either make or break your carefully built brand image, CNBC TV 18 signer Denugara talks to three internet stars, Gulpanag, actor and activist, Lakshmi Rebecca, online talk show host and Shraddha Sharma of Your Story to decode what to keep in mind while building your brand in the online world. We all need to be clear about uh, what our objective is and then you need to carve out a strategy on how you plan to achieve that objective. So for example, I'm part of a, a tech startup which beautifully marries my passion for fitness and technology and that is authentic to my core messaging because I'm somebody who's passionate about the evolution that internet has brought in our lives and about fitness. So a 140 character tweet needs to have the same core messaging and authenticity and language as a 500 word blog post or a thousand word article or eventually a 70, 80,000 word book. Now if you deviate from that core messaging is where you begin to lose your own brand value and that's, that's, the, that's the way I summarize it. For you it might come naturally after so many years of doing it but for an entrepreneur who's trying to build his own personality online or for someone who's uh, trying to build a personality for their business, uh, how thought out should each tweet, each post on Facebook, each picture on Instagram be? Identifying your core audience and how do you plan to reach out to them and then identifying who you really are and once these three questions are answered, what is your personality and then accordingly you conduct yourself, you define the character that you are, mm. I mean are you a XYZ and then what are you apart from that and it's what you're apart from that is what is engaging to people. Uh, three years back I created a Twitter account and three years back whenever I used to be on Twitter and this is to all the entrepreneurs in the room whenever I used to be on Twitter I thought that those who have a lot of followers they should do one tweet retweet. They should retweet me, right? That everyone will get to know what I do, what I'm doing. How do they get to know how to brand, right? The more generously, the more magically, the more selflessly you give on social media, I'm telling you, that is one place where the divinity still stays. You get a hundred times more. Lakshmi, for you, in terms of uh, separating yourself from the brand, one thing that you think you've done right in separating your personal uh, Twitter stroke social media accounts from the brand and how you think that's helped you? I actually had separated initially, now I've integrated it. That works better for me. Put it all under one name because I think there's just so much more impact because it all connects to one person anyway. I was really, I think I was apprehensive about going that route because it seemed a little flamboyant to my own self, but then that's what works. If you're putting in all this energy instead of spreading it out so thin, concentrate it, you get so much more results. You know, one question which I keep asking and asking my team, ki kal social media nahi raha to hum kaha rahenge? See, social media is a means to an end, right? It's one of the means to an end. The larger question would be to ask is that, are they talking about you? And are they talking about you in their blog? Are they talking about you when we meet here, right? That online manifestation, is it happening in the offline world? And tomorrow you'll see after two, three years after the social media frenzy has died down, maybe the whole conversation would be brand noise online. Does it actually translate into when I meet you? When Flipkart signed on, they're saying they didn't sign on, fair enough. When they were looking to sign on, every single competitor had no option but to sign on. Thank you.